Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Grand Rounds. My name is Tom Farden, and I'm a chair and organizer of Grand Rounds. And it is a great pleasure to welcome the Scott Gem team to Grand Rounds. Um, we, that is the uh, Scottish Graduate Entry um, Medical School, which is a, a brainchild of various folk, and I'm sure John will go into it in more detail, but the plan to, to, to generate a, a graduate entry medical school here in Scotland um, and to utilize the skills and talents that are around here in, in the east of Scotland. And we heard from John ooh, a few years ago um, at the before Scott Gem started and once it had just about got going. Um, and, uh, and it's great to have you back to tell us about what's happened, what have the pitfalls been, what's worked well, what's changed, um, and looking forward to your first set of graduates coming out into the workforce. So John is going to start off, John, uh, John Dowell, um, and then he's going to, I suspect, introduce the rest of the team. There's a three or four different speakers. If you have any questions, please put them into the chat box. Please do, um, uh, please do mute your microphones if you're not speaking, just so that we can hear the speakers clearly. Um, and John, over to you. Really looking forward to hearing the progress. Thank you very much, Tom. It's a real pleasure to, uh, to be here and to be able to share a bit more about Scott Gem. Um, we're at a stage now when, as I'm trying to get my slides coming up, um, when two, two interesting things are happening. So one is we've now got, got quite a team, as you mentioned, we've got our, our final students coming up towards graduation in 2022. Um, but also we've got, therefore, a lot of students circulating now within Tayside. So this is a smashing chance for us as a team to, to introduce ourselves um, and to help the integration process with our, with our students as they come through the system in Tayside. So firstly, I just wanted to highlight some of the key differences around Scott Gem. There's not going to be time to cover much in great detail. I'm sure any of us would be happy to pick up queries outside of this call and be delighted to. But Scott Gem is a bit different, and that's because in 2016 we were commissioned with a mission. Um, and that mission was specifically to, to generate generalist doctors, obviously of good quality, adaptable, compassionate ones, et cetera, but also with this interesting twist of um, being capable of driving change within the healthcare system um, in Scotland. I'm not gonna go through all the lines of this, but this, this slide just depicts the fact that there's a lot of history here, going back to the post-war period um, when the, the um, UN Declaration of Human Rights declared that medical care was a basic human right, going through the Declaration of Alma Arta, suggesting that primary care was actually principally a human right, and increasingly through the WHO, where the importance of a good and strong primary care system, particularly in rural areas, has been emphasised as being absolutely key um, to communities as well as to individuals. And then more locally in Scotland, it's very clear that there is in particular a rural workforce crisis, and that's very much been part of our original mission, but in fact has become one of the driving missions now under Scott Gem, because we've increasingly swung um, that way, I think, um, and that's just worth pointing out. So statistically, um, it, between 2009 and 2017, there's been a 3% fall in GP whole time equivalents in Scotland. The vacancy rate unsurprisingly has increased and that's not fairly distributed either it's particularly rural areas of Scotland where this is a, a, a factor and of course it's worth noting that um, that has a particular impact in small communities small real, rural communities so actually underlying Scott Gem is a is a pretty firm socially accountable um, mandate um, which, which is driving very much the way we've designed the course so uh, it's my real pleasure today to hand over to a number of, of, of the team and indeed to welcome Kira Jones, one of our senior students who's going to, to support um, Angela's talk on Agents of Change. So um, Rob Scully is, or Bob Scully as I know him, is the lead of our GCMs and he will tell you more about what the, these generalist clinical mentors do and they really have become anchors for the curriculum. Um, Sarath Burgess Kathala is, um, has taken over from Lisa Owen as our lead of the clinical interactions course largely, but also OSCEs as they pertain to the senior years in Dundee as well. Gordon McClay, who will be known to many of you, of course, um, is our year three, four lead overall, and I think will be 
talking a bit about the inter integration we've done these years four and five. Um, Angela is our Agents of Change lead and Kira, as I've already mentioned. And then finally, uh, just by way of spoiler alert, I'm going to highlight some information around how the students have done in the S3-4 exams um, and also um, some information around how it looks like our graduates' career intentions are, are coming together. So um, having, if, I'm going to ask Bob to kick me off now because I have indeed lost all my... Uh, my um, Zoom screen controls for some reason. Um, so over to you, Bob. Oh, Great. okay, John, thank you. Um, let me see if I can share this. Um, is that, can folks see that okay? We're seeing it, but not on slideshow. Okay, uh, no worries. Um, is that, is that okay for folk? That's great, Bob. Thanks a lot. Thanks, uh, Tom. Yeah, so as, as John mentioned, my name is Robert Scully. Um, I, I, I lead up the GCM team, these generalist clinical mentors. Uh, I'm a GP in Northeast Fife in an extended role in emergency medicine in Fife. Um, and uh, really, this is just a five minute sort of overview of, of what these GCMs are all about. Um, so, so the acronym, as we've mentioned, is generalist clinical mentors. And when I describe this role to folk, I think conceptually it's good to think about it uh, or good to think about them um, against some of the variables um, that Val Was identified in her, in her report by choice, not chance, around why undergraduate students might not choose a career in general practice. And I think um, it's, a, it's a small leap by me, but I think uh, some of these would also be applicable to generalist careers. So issues around the hidden curriculum, uh, prestige, uh, money, uh, intellectual stimulation, which is a real uh, a depressing item for me with respect to generalism, uh, adverse working conditions and negative experience during placement. So when we're considering the GCM role, we, we want uh, the students to have exposure to high quality role modeling and mentorship from the first week of first year and build on those generalist uh, role modeling skills throughout the curriculum right through to the end of fourth year. Um, we, we want them to uh, really support the students. They have a, a, a very wide ranging role, including teaching, assessing and support. Um, and in order for them to do that role, we've tried to design jobs that have protected time for preparation and development uh, because it really is a far ranging role, as John mentioned, an anchor clinical role within the curriculum. Um, they're central to delivery of the program. Um, so far, they've received uh, quite positive student feedback, and I think they're valued, particularly in the context of, of an accelerated, distributed uh, case-based learning curriculum in years one and two, and then, uh, uh, again, an accelerated, distributed curriculum through years three and four that Gordon will probably allude to. Um, thinking about the role in, in slightly more granular detail, uh, we've tried to employ a master-apprentice model uh, from the outset. Um, essentially, GCMs, uh, true years one and two, are responsible for small groups of students. Um, it's difficult to define a small group, uh, as I'm sure many on the call know, but we try to work to a ratio of about six to one GCMs to students. Um, they're all generalists, um, most of whom are GPs. Uh, that's simply because in years one and two with our case-based learning curriculum, in order to provide complementary clinical experiences, uh, the case mix in general practice lends itself to that. But in years three and four, um, particularly in year four now, we have rural emergency physicians um, as well as uh, um, anaesthetists. And, and we would like to build that faculty or, or that group of associated uh, GCMs uh, into secondary care as, as we grow as a program. Um, glad to report we've had positive recruitment. That was an anxiety for us uh, in designing these roles. These roles are anywhere between um, sort of uh, one to six sessions per week. Um, and now we have 38 GCMs across Scotland and across all of our partner health boards. Um, I think critically for the students, I say here they're a trusted omnipresence for students. I think that's true and it's reflected in the feedback. Uh, an accelerated program like this uh, where students are moving between different areas, they do rely on these um, anchor clinicians who meet them on a weekly basis in some cases to, to review what they're doing and try and provide the complementary clinical experiences uh, that uh, support their learning. And they can do this, as I say, through the master apprentice model and in an iterative way. Um, 
uh, I'm lashing through this, but it's a, it's a novel role, uh, certainly within GP education, that, that we're not aware of there being substantive uh, clinical roles like this with protected time for development, the previous sort of um, role that would have been used as a GP tutor. Uh, and, and as we know, um, that can be uh, challenging uh, to provide protected time for in the same way often that uh, educators in secondary care may have had protected time. Small groups, I've said resilient groups, um, that's more by accident than design. I think during COVID, this model of education has actually uh, stood up quite well, particularly in years three and four, or in years three, at least during the LIC. Um, we know that they're core faculty for the program. And, and really, I just mentioned here in the bottom right-hand corner that they have a multifactorial role, tutor, lecturer, assessor, and mentor, and, and we hope inspiration. Uh, uh, the word cloud on the right um, alludes to that. That's captured uh, some feedback from our students back in 2019. Um, speaking of feedback, um, really sorry, there's, we've got lots of NES-based uh, feedback, both quantitative and qualitative. I've just put up this quote from a student. I don't think I could have captured the role of a GCM better myself. Uh, and clearly it's a quite a selective quote, but it might be interesting uh, for you guys to read um, whilst I'm discussing. And this did this feedback came to us during COVID when groups had had to move virtual and, and, um, and their experience for the students was obviously very much undermined, unfortunately. Um, final slide from me. Um, if you want to know more about what the GCMs do, I think it's best to hear directly from the students. And uh, it's a, this is a plug for the student website, the Scotch M Stories. It's completely run by students and it uh, captures lots of reflections about the small group learning that they have um, uh, been on and enjoyed, hopefully. And also the GMC reports refer to the GCM work. So that's, uh, that's it from me. Um, happy to take questions now or at the end, whatever, whatever works. Thank you. Thanks, Bob. So um, next up is going to be Sarath, but as I mentioned in the chat, if people want to put in questions in the chat while people are talking, we can pick them up at the end of their sessions, hopefully, or else they can, they can answer them directly. So do feel free to, to bung things in. We will be rattling through things a bit, but there should be some time to cover, cover questions. So uh, Sarath, can I invite you to step in? Yep. Hi, hi everyone, I'm um, Sarath Burgess Costala. Uh, I'm a GP by background, as, as John's said. Um, I'm also the lead for the clinical interactions course, which I guess in, is a slightly esoteric way of saying clinical skills. Um, the, the course utilizes the expertise of GCMs, as Robert um, expounded upon, as generalists. And I would say the focus of generalism, whether it's in general practice or general surgery or medicine or ED or, or whatever, is the development of advanced clinical reasoning as the cases we, we see tend to exhibit slightly greater heterogeneity. Um, and that's the emphasis in, in many ways of the, the click course as we, as we tend to abbreviate it to. Are my slides showing there? Just double checking. Yeah, so and they've progressed thumbs okay, up. Sarah. That's fantastic, Kim. So the, the CLIC course comprises most clinical skills teaching for Scott GEM students in years one and two, uh, with a wee bit in year three. Um, it's taught by GCMs one session a week for 56 weeks in total across years one and two. And the content of the CLIC course parallels the other taught content of that week, whether it's lectures, non-timetabled elements, or secondary care experiences integrates the teaching of communication skills, clinical examination and procedural skills and does so through a set of scenarios. These tend to use simulated patients, sometimes peer examination and sometimes, especially for acute cases, mannequins. Um, students are therefore taught how to conduct a history and perform a clinical examination appropriate to that patient's complaint. And by doing so, we aim to develop clinical reasoning as clinical reasoning skills as students are required to decide what is and what isn't relevant in a clinical context. By the end of year two, then essentially students should have had a solid grounding basic history taking examination skills. 
include as well as some more advanced consultation skills, um, such as those required in breaking bad news, talking through DNA CPR status or anticipatory care plans. They will also have opportunities to learn the majority of procedural skills in a simulated context. The other side of my job, as, as John mentioned, is I'm the Scott Gym lead for the OSCE examinations. Um, in years one and two, Scott Gym students sit separate OSCEs from Dundee students. These, however, are parallel the Dundee format. Um, in year one, all those exams are held in St Andrews, and in year two, they're held in a mixture of St Andrews, Dumfries and Galloway and the Highlands. In years three and four, the students join the Dundee students and sit the same OSCE. So year three Scott Gym students sit the same OSCE as the year four Dundee students and final year Scott Gym students will sit the same OSCE as the final year Dundee students. The year three students will also, so, sorry, so, Scott Gym were also involved in the design of the OSCE in years three and four um, and we will contribute and we do contribute examiners to the summative exam. Year three students also have a separate formative OSCE, which is held in the region, so that's in Tayside, Dumfries and Galloway and Highlands. And just as a wee plea, we're always interested in new examiners. Um, I think as an examiner, it's nice to see how the students are faring. Um, and particularly in the pre-COVID days, it was a nice way to catch up with old colleagues. So we kind of got that sort of marketing ploy out of the way. Um, ultimately, I guess the proof is in the pudding. And I don't want to overstate anything because it's early days yet, but so far our students' results are promising in terms of the OSCEs. Um, with no Scott Gym students thus far having failed an OSCE, and we have one set of results comparing the performance of year three Scott Gym students with their year four Dundee student counterparts, because they all sat the same exam. And these show that the year three students, um, who are now in their final year, um, performed at least as well as their counterparts in Dundee, which I think provides a degree of reassurance uh, at a clinical level. Um, that's really all I have to say. I'm happy to take questions now or at the end or through the chat, but I'll, I'll um, stop sharing my screen if I can work out how to do so and hand over to Gordon otherwise. Okay, so a brief moment in case anyone wants to put any things in chat for Sarath. The, the other thing I would just kind of point out is the bridge between the CLIC course, as Sarath has, has highlighted, particularly in years one and two, with our GCMs, who, who you might not have rumbled also then have the same group of six students in practice with them for a day, and often, but not always, can then therefore rehearse with real patients um some of the skills they've been practicing in the in the clinical skills environment for instance you know one of them that they love because it's in semester one is is um venous section having practiced on on mannequins and each other they then um get opportunity um in that week or shortly thereafter to take blood from patients early on in the program and and rehearse that thereafter um gordon the floor is yours Thanks, John. Um, so my name is Gordon McClay. I'm, I'm the year three four lead um, for Scott Gem. I started um, two and a half years ago, a year before the students moved into the first um, year three um, live uh, year. Um, I'm a GP in Ochterada and Perthshire, um, and I'm helped ably with um, this role um, with Lloyd Thompson, who's the year three lead. Um, so hopefully this will move on. Oh. I don't think it has yet, hold on. Okay, there we go. Um, so what can I tell you about year three and four of Scott Gem? The students, as I say, have had one full year of year three now and they're into their year four. Um, the big change really is that the students in year one and two have really been primarily the responsibility of the University of St Andrews and they move in year three to become the responsibility of the University of Dundee and to all intents and purposes become Dundee students, although they are still very much Scott Gem students, um, because this is a programme which is part of both St Andrews and Dundee universities. As we've heard already, it's very much a distributed programme, um, and we are working with our partners in Dumfries and Galloway, in Fife, in Highland, and here in Tayside. And I think the other thing to mention, which has been touched upon already, 
is that there are some overarching concepts that exist throughout year three and four, which have also been the year, there in years one and two. So even though the structures might be quite different, and those, those three things are the portfolio. So it hasn't been mentioned yet, but the students have a portfolio that they have in all four years where they collect evidence um, of their progression. They collect um, assessments within that portfolio and they have portfolio reviews throughout all of the four years. So they're collecting um, items or, or submissions for that portfolio. They have um, an Agents of Change programme, and we're going to hear about that in, in a bit more detail from Angie. But basically, this is where the students are considered as agents of change throughout all four years of the programme. Um, and then they, are they, they have the generalist clinical mentors, and, and Robert's explained that in a bit more detail. And this, again, is a, is a, a core element that goes through all four years where they have contact with um, the GCMs to help support them throughout the programme albeit that those groups are slightly differently run in each year. Year three specifically is what we call a longitudinal integrated clerkship. And this is really quite different to the way that most of us probably have gone through medical school in that we are sort of turning the whole system on its head in that traditionally what we would have done would have been block teaching, which might have included a block um, out in general practice. What we're doing is turning that around and seeing that the students will spend the whole year attached to a single general practice and spend time going from that general practice out into other places to get their experience. So it is really a reverse of what might normally happen. So they are based in a practice for the whole year for 40 weeks. 50% of that time is clinically spent in that practice. And the remainder of the week is spent collecting secondary care experiences, doing project work for agents of change and very much self-directed learning um, as students. This map shows you the distribution of practices that we have um, been successful in recruiting across Scotland for the students to have their experience of the, uh, the LIC or the LIC. And you can see that for this year in year three, we have students placed in and around Dundee and Tayside and Perthshire. We've got them around Inverness and around Dumfries and Galloway, but we have got um, a student on um, Tyree, and we have got a couple of students up in Orkney as well and up in Keithness and Sutherland. So there is a, a very wide distribution of students, which you can imagine in itself brings challenges with the students being quite remote um, and distanced from each other and having GP tutors, again, quite remote and distanced from each other. So th they have their time in, in general practice. So they're there for five sessions, getting experience from their GPs and um, the other members of the team seeing patients. What about their secondary care experiences? What do we mean by that? So if they're going out into secondary care, what do we want them to get? Well, there are three elements of it that we, we anticipate will happen during that longitudinal clerkship. The first is the, what we call the patient journey. And that is we want the students to follow patients from the practice into secondary care and see what happens to that patient over time, rather than simply seeing a snapshot of the patient at one clinic or in one general practice setting. And what we'd like the students to do, to do that hopefully in two different ways. One, acutely, although this is actually very difficult and it's proved very difficult for students to do, and that is to follow somebody who needs an acute admission into hospital and then to follow that, that, that patient as they have their acute admission and see what happens to them and then follow them back into primary care when they come home. The other, the other possibility, which is perhaps a bit easier to organise, is to follow them up in a planned way. So if a, if a patient's referred to a clinic um, or referred for a diagnostic procedure, is to perhaps arrange with that patient um, uh, to go and spend some time with that patient when they go to the clinic or when they go in for the diagnostic procedure to see what actually happens. So for example, if they were going for an endoscopy, then perhaps to go and see that patient having their endoscopy rather than perhaps going along to a full endoscopy list, which, which might be something that happened in the past. Although we can talk, talk about COVID and how that's impacted on it. The other aspect are planned experiences. And so rather than the, the student having to organise this, then there are things that the secondary care um, uh, colleagues will arrange for them. And, and these might be things which we call acute care bursts. So these might be a couple of days um, looking at what happens in an acute admissions ward, following the foundation doctors, or it may be organised specifically for geographical reasons. So you can imagine that coming down 
just simply to follow patients into hospital that you're in in WIC is not really appropriate. So in secondary care, blocks of time will be arranged for them to come down and spend time in read more. And then the final um, option is for students to actually, through their own needs, identify things that they want to do in secondary care and then arrange those in secondary care. So those might be clinic attendances or again, diagnostics or really anything they feel they are missing as part of their, uh, their general practice primary care attachment. And they would arrange that through secondary care to go into their, their secondary care um, attachments and get that experience. So that's year three, and I've just kept it brief, but we can talk about that in more detail if needed. Year four, which we're now doing for the first time this year, is very much the traditional Dundee year five where our students are joining the block rotation. Um, but what's been a challenge for us and for the university and, and for everyone really is, is the whole idea of capacity for students. Because we are adding in, um, in our first year, we had 54 students. This year going into year three, we've got 53. It's that increased capacity in the number of students. So what we've worked, done is worked very closely with our colleagues in the other health boards in Dumfries and Galloway, Fife and Highland to create that additional capacity. And we've done that by creating regionally resident students for their final year. And my figures there show that we've actually got 28 Scott Gem students who have chosen to go regional for their final year. 14 in Highland, 12 in, in um, Fife, and five in Dumfries and Galloway. And in addition, this was offered to Dundee students and three Dundee students have chosen to go regional for their final year as well. What we've also done is managed to create out blocks for Dundee based students, both for foundation rotations and for SSCs in our regions. And, and essentially what we've done is created an additional 150 or, or more than 150 new SSCs and clinical blocks and foundation posts. Um, so Scott Gem has come along with a requirement for more capacity and what we've been able to do in our, in our regions with, our help, with help from our regional leads and we're very grateful for that, is to create that increased capacity. What can I say about year three and four overall so far? Well, the positives are that, as been mentioned already, our students have done well in the exams overall. So um, both in the formative exams and in the important summative exams at the end of year three, we've done as well as the, the, the standard Dundee students. There's no doubt with the feedback we've received from the students that they've enjoyed very much the clinical experiences, both in primary and secondary care. Um, they really value the time that the clinicians are giving them in, in getting that experience. The students themselves are very well received. We've had very positive feedback about the students themselves, both in general practice and also on their secondary care attachments, about their approach, their professionalism, their maturity. And the agents of change, which we're going to hear about, we've had some very positive outcomes in terms of the work that the students have done. The challenges, well, there are always challenges, and I think the three I've highlighted here, I think, are the three main ones. The first is that transition. So they're moving from a very organized teaching um, structure in years one and two to a very open-ended structure in year three. And the students have found that quite difficult. So that lack of structure is a, is a problem for some students in the longitudinal clerkship. And the other thing which has been a challenge in particular the first year when it was during COVID is that access to secondary care. Um, people not knowing who they are, and that's a learning process, I think, because they are new in the system, feeling that sometimes they're having to squeeze in among the other students who are, who are better known, both in, in Tayside and in Highland, where they take Aberdeen students, and just the capacity issues, again, of, of getting access into placements in secondary care. So I'm going to stop at that point, and again, I'm happy to take questions at the, at the end of the presentations. Thanks very much, Gordon. Um, we are doing okay for time, so uh, if any of people want to raise a hand and ask Gordon any questions, um, feel free. Um, without that or any comments in chat, then I will um, ask Angie if she would like to pick up and tell us a bit about how Agents of Change is going. Are you with me there, Angie? Hmm. Um, so looks like 
Looks like we've lost Angie Miller. Can I confirm with people hearing me okay? Yeah, John, we can hear you. you. Yeah. Um, I'll just see if I can find if Angie's disappeared. She's 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 still um she's still signed into the process. Okay, well, look, now is a really good time to ask questions, but in the in the interim, um Kira, would you be able to to step in perhaps and, and tell us about your, your project and then Angie can put that in context. Yes. Fantastic. Yes. Yeah, so, yours, yours. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I've just been asked by Angela just to talk about um, a bit about myself and how Scott Gem students, what they bring to a health improvement block um, in final year. So like everyone said, I'm fourth year medical uh, Scott Gem student. I came into this degree straight from studying anatomical sciences at Dundee University. And in my fourth year as a Scott Gem, I'm now integrated with the fifth year Dundee medical students and follow the same sort of timetable and share blocks with, with the students there. I'm currently undertaking my four week healthcare improvement block in patient safety. There are three Scott Gem students and five Dundee students in the group. I am part of a smaller group that's looking at improving the documentation of death within Ward 4 in order to facilitate accurate completion of the MCCD and facilitate accurate conversations with families. One thing we find that useful that Scott Gym students can bring to the block is that we can bring real life examples of methodology and tools that we've de developed over our three years of Scott Gym. Our biggest learning opportunity was carrying out our own improvement project within the LIC year in year three and we can share those challenges and experiences with the team. So I carried out my uh, project within Dumfries and Galloway and I uh, looked at um, reducing the number of face-to-face -face appointments in general practice during the COVID pandemic. And we did this by looking to improve the quality of patient-sent images for dermatological patients and um, increasing the reception staff confidence in triaging these types of patients. My experience with the project was really positive. I had a great team that was able to help facilitate it and were really engaged. The challenges that I faced was being able to sustain the test of change for the whole um, 19 weeks of testing, just due to workloads, extra workloads and priorities with um, COVID and vaccination clinics and things like that. More generally, what I think Scott Gem students bring to the block- Thanks, is John as graduate students come from different backgrounds and careers. And this experience perhaps allows people to see things from a different perspective and enables different approaches to problem solving. In the context of quality improvement, it means that they may be able to incorporate some of these experiences into making changes. Can I pass over to Angela? Are you back with us, Angie? All yours, thank you for stepping Here, in. Can you see my screen? We can see your screen, but it's not in slide view. No, yeah, I'm here. Angela, I've just done my section. Okay, we still seem to have a, a significant problem with the connection with Angela, don't we? Um, so I think what I'll do is, is I'll just pick up on some of the questions and, until that is, is sorted, sorted out. Um, so um, Ronnie, you, you've asked about the, the cost of the programme. I'm very happy to, to field that. Basically, we're working on four years money, not five. So um, we get the same annual income approximately as the other programmes, both from the normal routes of the Scottish Funding Council, the university side, and through the ACT or NHS side of funding. And we are within budget. So um, it, it's not, it, it's actually cheaper, if you like, than, than other programmes. Um, but the way we manage our money is slightly differently. And, and I think we have rather better control over how it gets used. And it's that in particular that has allowed us to disperse the programme around the boards at speed um, and also decide where to invest, in particular investing in, in a lot of expensive staff in the form of GCMs. Um, and, and that's why evaluating them and seeing how, they, how they've done is, is absolutely key for, from our, uh, our perspective. Happy to give a bit more detail on that if you like, but um, 
but basically we're, we're actually overall um, significantly less than the, the budget that, that we're, you know, potentially would be available for a normal five-year student. Um, so I'm just uh, scanning down Kevin's question um, here now. Um, so yeah, the, the, as Kevin points out, we were hoping that we would be able to have a positive influence on the GP workforce over time, obviously through supplying graduates who might be interested in general practice, but also through invigorating GP educators. Um, and we haven't got any firm data that I could point to you there, Kevin. What I can say is that our recruitment has, has proved, if anything, easier and easier. Um, it, it is a role that people have heard about now, and we are recruiting some folks up from, from England in particular um, to come and take on some of these roles, which from NHS Scotland's point of view, at least, maybe not the uh, total UK sum is, is, is good news. Um, and there is a sense that we are bringing some, some positivity and fresh blood in, into the workforce. Um, and I say that on the back of the um, Remote and Rural GPs conference recently in Inverness, where, where there was um, a considerable buzz and enthusiasm around, around the impact and arrival of Scott Gem students um, in, in areas that aren't typically heavily involved in, in undergraduate education. Um, so there, there is some positivity spinning off that we can't grasp yet. Angie, you've, I think, popped back in. Does that mean we've got you back online now? Can you hear me? Yes, we can this time. I don't, honestly, I don't know what happened. I was speaking out. I don't know what happened at all. I'm going to try and share this. Do you want me to come in now? Please do. <laughs> sorry about that. Kira, I'm so sorry. It's okay. I've just done my section, Angela, so it, it should make a bit more sense after we've heard from... The first few slides. Fantastic. Can you see my slides as well? Yes, yeah, not sharing as a PowerPoint though. What about now? Perfect. Thank you. So I'm Angie. I'm a lecturer in undergraduate healthcare improvement. I'm sure I can't see anybody, but I'm sure I worked with an NHS T side for many years uh, within the uh, medicine and improvement team. And you've met Kira. So apologize, technology. So one of the aims, as John described earlier, of the Scott Gem programme is to uh, produce a group of doctors you know, equipped to develop as well as deliver optimal healthcare tailored for the 21st century. And the focus of Agents of Change is around the developing part. So within Agents of Change, uh, we describe our aim to be uh, every Scott Gem graduate has the enthusiasm, competence and confidence to influence change in their next job. So this is what we seek to enable through the agents of change part of the curriculum. So our team has spent some time thinking what is an agent of change and who is an agent of change. And we were given this term, but we're trying to develop it to think this is our working definition of what an agent of change is. So an agent of change will identify opportunities for improvement by leading, engaging and working with staff, patients and communities while they're a student and also moving forward to be when they're qualified doctors. The aim is to empower patients and staff to drive forward positive change and have a future focus and wider systems thinking approach to health and care. So within the curriculum, there are five vertical themes within Agents of Change and they're threaded through the four years of the programme and they map to the GMC outcomes. So the three pillars for outcomes for graduates are at the top, and then throughout the four years, we revisit these themes. So as you can read here yourself, here are the, the themes. The agents of the change parts of the curriculum covers 10% of each year, and is a requirement for all Scott Gem students. Within the, the, the different elements of, of uh, agents of change, there are opportunities for Scott Gem students to do different projects, take on different uh, significant event analysis, but actually it is mandatory this part of, of the curriculum. It is summatively assessed through the portfolio and assessments are marked and contribute to the overall mark for, for the year. So when agents have changed, the focus is on the healthcare system and enabling students to take a wider perspective. So how is this done in the curriculum? 
In year one, the key learning activities are around clinical audit and a third uh, sector placement. In year two, the students take part in a clinical appraisal journal club and do a group quality improvement project. In year three, the students do an individual quality improvement project throughout the whole LIC year. So they start and work with the team at the beginning of the LIC year and then lead and work with the team throughout the LIC year to take through a healthcare improvement piece. In year three, they're also involved in a community engagement placement and do two significant event analysis that they lead within the practice. In year four, they do a group uh, improvement project during the four week healthcare improvement SSC. And again, they work with a team in a group within secondary care to take forward a piece of improvement work. They lead an adverse event review and they do personal reflections related to the portfolio. In the future, we also see connections with electives uh, when they're available and the global health uh, module. You can see here a couple of uh, quotes from students as they actually progress through the agents and change part of the curriculum and began to understand and got it, if, if you like. And again, through Agents of Change, we really focus on learning uh, through doing either individually as a group and working with and obviously within their clinical uh, placements. So an aspiration uh, for uh, us within Agents of Change is for the activities to contribute to the wider system. So each year we have Scott Gem students undertaking projects that contribute to improving services for both patients and staff. So each year there are approximately 15 audits in primary care, 100 community engagement projects, and now well over 60 quality improvement projects, and about 150 significant event analysis and adverse event reviews. So it's an opportunity really for, to be, for students to be working with the clinical teams uh, to really benefit uh, you know, the clinical teams, patients and staff with all the work that they're actually doing. Now, Kira was going to come in here. Uh, Kira, is there anything else you wanted to say at this point about your project? Uh, no, I think that's it. It's just um, I carried out my project in Dumfries and Galloway and um, I benefited from having a really good team that was engaged but um, as um, I discussed the problems were trying to keep the sustainability of the tests of change over the whole course of the... Um... Kira coming in now? Nope, I'll just carry on then, okay. So, Angie, there's something going wrong with your sound I think. So Kira was talking to us there um, and, and you're cutting in and out a little bit. Do you want to go on to your final slide? Can you still hear me? No. Not, not reliably. Have a final go. Can you still hear me, John? Okay. Yeah, you pop back in. Okay. Last go. Last go. Okay. Angie, do you think you could stop sharing? Because that's, I'm afraid your sound is coming in and out. Um, and it, and it's I bit... can't hear you. Right. Um, so with apologies for An to Angie, whether she's hearing me or not, I think we'll, we'll cut that a uh, bit a little bit short. Um, what I'll do perhaps is um, some questions are coming in, which is great. And thank you to Bob for answering those. Please ping in any others. Um, I will just finish off with my last few slides um, and then those that want to can stay on for, for, for questions and things. Um, so let me do the deed again. So I'm hoping that you're seeing my slides there again, just with a, a blue screen at, at, at the moment. Um, I'll go back to that actually. So, I mean, it's been lovely to have the opportunity to explain a bit more uh, about how the program um, is coming together. Um, and hopefully that's brought bits of it to life to you without just plodding through a very dull presentation around the, the whole structure of the program in a traditional sense. But importantly, um, for this audience, um, I hope it's been helpful to showcase some of our, our core team members who are involved, particularly Gordon, Year 3, 4 lead, and Angie, um, whose agents have changed lead in, in, for year three and four. Um, and um, 
these might be people who you might want or need to contact to streamline you know the provision of, of, of learning experiences or indeed to explore new ideas or opportunities um, if, if those have come to mind during this talk or whenever please do you know access folks and there is obviously a um, ongoing work to do in integrating the two kind of programs and I hope what we've presented here has made sense of that the coherence that we need to bring the program together with with our you know intended mission which is a little bit different so as has been um headlined uh, once or twice um before now um it's great news that our students progression and performance has has proved as good as it has obviously that's been an anxiety for us introducing a program that is as radical as this at least as radical in uk terms there are other comparable examples around the uk uh, around the world, sorry, in Australia, um, Canada in particular. Um, so we currently now have 52 graduates from our original 55 um, who we an are anticipating should be able to graduate in 2022, which will be fabulous. And that's contingent upon our final bit of GMC accreditation, but we don't have any significant uh, expected problems there. Um, and the other three are all still on the course. So, so far we've lost no students. The average attrition rate for a UK medical course across the duration is around seven to eight percent. So that, that's a good hit rate um, and something we, we and the students should be very proud of. And as um, Sanaf has mentioned, no, no single Scott Gem students have had to resit any OSCEs, including that's the um, Scott Jim year three or Dundee year four OSCEs where the standards are very definitely directly comparable. And indeed in terms of performance, the Scott Gem cohort at that stage actually outperformed the, the Dundee cohort slightly on the OSCEs and they underperformed compared to the Dundee cohort on the single best answer knowledge-based assessment with no significant difference overall. So I think that's a fantastic achievement for the programmer and for the students. Um, and for a first year result is, is something that everyone can be hugely reassured uh, by and, and justifiably sort of proud of. Um, so in terms of the standard of what we're doing, despite offering a programme in which 50% of all clinical education is provided uh, or, or overseen by general practitioners, which is, is fairly atypical, um, and with a heavily self-directed component in particular during that lick year, um, it does, as has been shown elsewhere, it does work. Um, which is quite a, a, a fantastic situation to be in. The little graphic here that I'm going to share because it... it John, um, John, you no, can't see any slides, John. Oh, okay. That's weird. You're hearing me okay, Gordon, are you? Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Let me... Were you seeing any of those slides? Not the ones just now. We just heard you, saw you talking. Here we go. See it now. Okay, is that full screen? Uh, it's not quite on slide. You can see the slides down the left hand side and the main slide in the middle. Okay. It's not full screen. That's it. Okay. Um, so we've done a survey of all of our first three years uh, of students, not, not the, the current first years who've just entered, um, and asked them, amongst other things, around their career intentions. There was a, a heavily expressed intention to be to be a rural general practitioner, if you like, at the stage of admissions, which we, of course, couldn't totally kind of trust. And students, of course, have had a lot more experience now as they've gone through the programme, which has become a pretty thoroughbred um, remote and rural generalist focused programme. Um, so across the, the bottom bar here, starting with the big blue uh, blocks in, in the left hand corner, every dot is one of our student responses and the response rate was 77% overall. And you'll see from that, that around half of our students, almost exactly half of our students, are saying they do want to work in a rural environment, and that would be a town of 10,000 or less. So that's the equivalent of Furso or Wick. If they said Dumfries and Galloway or Perth, for instance, that would, be, that would not be considered rural. Um, so we've taken a fairly strict definition of that. Um, and around half say they'd prefer to be focused on an urban career. Um, the blue dots are those that are saying they uh, are clear they are intending a GP career, and that's around 37%. Um, the yellow dots uh, are saying they're pretty clear they want a consultant career, so unsurprisingly they are more urban focused perhaps. Um, though again, the yellow dots there, if they wanted an urban career in Dumfries and Galloway, Perth, Inverness, they would actually be in that urban category there. Um, and that's just over 20%. 
um, with the remainder, quite a significant number, um, being undecided career-wise and, and equally split between rural and, and urban um, styles of practice uh, being of interest to them. So that's very much in keeping. In fact, it's pretty favourable compared with a lot of the international literature to do with how programmes such as ours, um, with the substrate that they attract, because most, most selection is self-selection into medical school, of course, but given that we say very proudly on the tin what the programme is about, we do seem to be selecting students who are happy on the programme, which is obviously a great success, great win for us and them, um, and also in general seem to be fulfilling the mission. Um, so things are coming together quite well for Scott Gem. Um, obviously, it will take us some years to be absolutely clear um, how things are, are, are panning out. Um, and uh, sorry, because I still don't seem to have, if someone could unshare my slides, please, because it's um, something weird. Oh, I see where it is. It's gone on the top of my other screen for some strange reason. Um, so uh, there's a lot that, that's come together very nicely and we're a great sit moment to tell you a bit about the programme. But obviously, as, as others have said, it is still early days. We'll have to see where our graduates elect to to work, though, though they have all applied to foundation training in Scotland. Um, and um, we're open for business and we're very much open for questions. I'll, I'll look at the chat as we go through. But um, Tom, I don't know if you want to take control again and compare things for the remaining minutes. Thanks very much, John. Um, I'm sorry about the technical glitches here and there. I'm not sure if uh, Angie is very remote or not, but not nothing I could do from my end, I'm afraid, to fix the problem. Um, so very interesting, though. I was going to ask you about attrition rates and you beat me to it. Um, <coughs> excuse me. And um, a, a, a very impressively low attrition rate compared to what we have here. And um, my time in being SIP convener, you know, the attrition rate was, was pretty significant. And do, do you think that, that your lack of attrition is due to them being graduates already? Do you think it's, is it that they've already studied something? Is it that they're older? Is there a maturity thing? Is there a dedication because that's, you know, it's higher stakes later in life? What do you think the reason is? So, uh, I mean, I'm interested in the, in the views of others. I don't think we can say with any confidence, and obviously it's, it's, it's early days, um, but the attrition rate for graduate entry courses across the country, I think, is a little lower, but not, not zero. It's kind of four to five percent, not seven to eight percent. Mm -hmm. um, I think you obviously get some early years impact when you start a new program. So you get some real enthusiasts and, and you know, people are very committed and there's been a great sense of community amongst our students, which we've sought to encourage, but, but they haven't needed any encouragement. I mean, it's a small course and, and they've helped each other immensely. And we've created the space, if you like, for them to do that within these GCM groups, et cetera. So uh, I would imagine that that's quite a lot of it. They've had good student support, um, both from, from the St. Andrews teams, but, but and through, through, um, through the Dundee teams. But, but we've also, you know, we've, we've come through COVID, of course, and we've had students out in very remote and rural placements for a year during COVID uh, that, that, you know, could be significant causes for anxiety, but collectively, people have, have found the resources to pull through very well. So um, it's, uh, yeah, that's interesting, Ronnie's comment about, about an authentic program. That, that is how it feels, I have to say, that, that there is an authenticity about the, the, the program. It, it, it comes together well, and the staff who've jumped on board and helped lead it have been really invested, um, which I think, I think comes across. But I'll perhaps shut up and allow a few of those to come in too. Anybody else have any thoughts on that? So Ronnie has asked a question, um, how is the programme kept up to date and, and major new issues such as sustainability and climate control addressed in the programme? Yeah, uh, if Angie can come back in, she's very welcome to, otherwise I'll pick up on that. It, 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 it's always good, for Ronnie, the way you challenge us to get on to the next thing when we're, when we're just try, <laughs> trying, to deliver, trying to deliver the core. But actually, there's quite an easy answer to that, if you like. In, in, so, so there is, for instance, the sustainability SSC in, in the final year. That, that, so we are piggybacked with Dundee, of course. 
Um, so, so a lot of the innovations in Dundee and the staff members who they've appointed, for instance, to oversee sustainability, etc., we have the opportunity to, to take advantage of, which is one of the fantastic things. We've got great support from the resources available in two medical schools, you know, admin systems, etc. So uh, hats off to all the people who've helped us um, in various ways. Angie, you've come back in. Are you hearing us? And Yeah, sorry about that again. Can you hear me now? Yeah, and I think it was just to say as well, wasn't it, that in, in over year four, uh, there's the SSCs uh, and we'll be seeking support uh, for projects, you know, so obviously the students can come and experience and then have that clinical uh, exposure with you. So there is a sustainability that uh, Millie Stevens, I think, within public health, you'll know, and Rod, I think, was on the uh, on the call today is leading a design SSC. So there's loads of opportunities to obviously uh, move and think a bit differently. So again, as many teams would like to get involved uh, within the work. I think I would add that the students themselves drive that. So last year, one of the projects in the, in the longitudinal clerkship year was actually around inhalers and um, the use of inhalers and C not CFCs, but um, being more environmentally friendly. So somebody was looking at that with their pharmacist and their practice. So it is being looked at by the students. So they will drive that as well. Yeah, and the students took forward like waste management pieces of work as well. So as well as like some clinical pieces around medication uh, and system, they looked at uh, environmental pieces as well. Uh, and again, yeah, so really excellent pieces that they, they were initiating. Just a, a closing observation, if I might make, Tom, is, is the um, interesting difference between, or in my experience, and this is purely a personal view, between graduate students who, you, who I've witnessed in the past on the Dundee MBCHB programme, who, who obviously tend to fall into the, the, um, the style of, of the, the bigger cohort and, and having a graduate entry specific programme. Um, and we have challenged our entrance to to be professional and, and to take on challenge and use the skills that they've joined with. And um, that's, that creates a, a very markedly different kind of culture, which has been something that's been really interesting to witness from my perspective. Excellent. Um, there's 30 seconds. If you were starting again, what would you do differently? I would start planning earlier. Yeah, it's all been far more last minute than we would have chosen. Yeah. OK, I think we would all wish for a time machine, wouldn't we? We could all go, uh, we could have a bit more time. Um, right. Well, thank you very much for, to the team for that talk. Really interesting to hear how things have gone. Um, you know, I was involved in the build up to it. And then, of course, it all sort of disappears and we know it's happening. But it's great to know, you know this amazing work you've put together and the the students are all obviously happy and um, look forward to seeing the graduates come out and, and hitting the workforce. It's really fantastic. And, and always a pleasure to have you all here at Grand Rounds. Um, and next week, no Grand Rounds. The speaker, unfortunately, uh, due to illness reasons, can't present. So they'll be moving into next year. So you get a week off. Uh, but there is a Grand Round the following week. And it is uh, about porphyria. Um, so uh, Robert Daw is going to come and talk about the National Prof Porphyria Service, another speaker I've been chasing for a couple of years to talk about that interesting topic. So um, this talk will, when I get around to it, get edited and shoved up on YouTube so you can see it um, later on, along with all the other Grand Rounds that are recorded since 2015 onto that YouTube channel. Please do like and subscribe. Uh, we have 499 subscribers, so you could be that lucky 500th for subscriber to our YouTube channel. Um, right. Thank you very much, everyone. Um, enjoy your afternoon. I'm off to clinic. Thanks very much. Bye bye.